Hallelujah. He's been good. God bless you, old landmark. Come on in. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Come on. You know we come in praising him. Jesus, no other name I know. Bless that wonderful name. Bless that wonderful name. Bless that wonderful name. God bless you. I see you coming in. Come on, Saints. Hey, Mississippi. <laughs> Saints, Mississippi in the house. Thank you, Candy. Mother Janet. Deacon Luther Amos. Oh, no other name I know. In the name of Jesus. Healing in the name. Pastor got to lead the praise, play the music, preach the message. Y'all pray for your pastor. <laughs> his name is, what's his name, saints? No other name under heaven can save us but Jesus. Oh, Jesus, no other name I know. Jesus, Jesus, oh, no other name. God bless you, Brother Dansby. Thank you, Mother Janet, Sister Brenda. God bless you, Sister Gloria, love you. Love you all. Thank you so much for coming in. Sister Barbara, Arizona, stay safe, mask up, stay away from people, distance. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Jesus. 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 Help me call it. I love the calling. Well, so glad. Bless you, Sister Stevens. All right, we're coming in. Saints coming in the room tonight. God bless you, Sister Williams. So glad to see you, Sister Katrina. Oh, yeah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You better do it like you know how to do it. He's worthy to be praised. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Thank you, Sister Stevens. Good evening to you as well. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him, we come to praise your name. Oh, yeah. God bless you, Mother Lockhart. My big sister, thank you for coming in tonight. Oh, yes, oh, yeah. Sister Crawford, Missionary Craw Crawford, thank you for joining us tonight. Y'all come on in, come on in. Oh, yeah. We're going to praise him tonight. He's worthy to be praised. God bless you, my mother, Mother Mayo. Good to see you. Somebody ought to praise him. Missionary Edna, God bless you. All right now, Sister Nathan, good to see you tonight. 
God bless you. Mi hermano Torres, Santiago de Ponce, Puerto Rico. Yo bendiga, yo bendiga mucho. Orando por Puerto Rico. No other name I know. Now somebody come on and put a praise right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Well, as you're coming in, we want you to keep on praising God, keep on blessing the Lord, keep on lifting him up, keep on letting the name of the Lord be glorified. I'm going to ask you to do something right now, which is something we always do. We ask you, if you don't mind, if you'll take a moment and share that we're on the air, share that old landmark is in worship. We want someone else to be just as blessed, don't we? So come on and share that we're here. Share with your friends and your family. Oh, yes, it does. Come on and share. I'm going to share. There's some people I want to know that I have a word for them tonight. Lord gave me a word tonight. Great things are coming our way. Oh yes, we believe God tonight. I mean, I know the blood still works. I know that's kind of my theme song because it works for me. I need some more of you to share. I've got a great word from the Lord tonight. I call it great not because I'm preaching, but because the Lord has spoken something to me to bless you and bless those that you love. Hallelujah. Let them know Landmark is on. Pastor Amos is about to bring the word. Thank you, thank you. Yes, share it tonight. God is about to do something great for us. God bless you, Pastor Chisholm, Superintendent Chisholm. Brother Elliot, God bless you all for being with us tonight. Hallelujah. This Sunday night, this Sunday night, we're going to be tremendously blessed on Bishop Amos Live, with Bishop Daniel Littleton. Bishop Daniel Littleton out of Mississippi Southern Jurisdiction, Southern First, is going to be with us as well as Judge Lily Blackman Sanders out of the state of Mississippi. She's a circuit court judge. We're going to talk about the effect of the flag, amen, of the changes in Mississippi. We're going to talk about the effect of those changes and whether it represents a social significance, a change in the heart, or just politics as usual. You don't want to miss. It's going to be a great night, and I believe God is going to move in a great way. So we're looking for God to bless, and I know you can join us on Sunday night at 6 p.m. Amen for Bishop Amos Live. Thank you for coming into the place of worship tonight at Old Landmark Church of God in Christ. God bless you. I'm gonna ask you to turn with us in prayer right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day. This is the day that you've made and we rejoice and we're glad in it. We pray that you would bless these, your people who have entered into the holy sanctuary of God even by way of the virtual worship service. We pray that you would anoint this, your servant to minister the words that you put in my heart this evening to say to the saints, to let them know that you're ready to hear them. And I pray, God, that everyone that hears and receives will be blessed and anointed. Let your will be done and your glory be revealed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
Hallelujah. Somebody give God a praise right there. Come on, Lamar, give God a praise. Come on, saints everywhere. Whoever you are, wherever you are, prepare yourself for a word from the Lord. And I say from the Lord, and I always say this, and I want you to know this. I'm so humbled of God that he would choose to use me uh, in such a time as this, that he would choose to speak through me and let me be one of his mouthpieces. Uh, if it were not for the hardness of the hearts of men, he wouldn't need preachers. We would not have to be his spokespersons because people would be tuned in individually and they would have no problem hearing from God. But some people are not ready to hear from God and so we have to try to convince them. We have to try to persuade men and women that they need to come to Jesus. And so we're gonna work on trying to persuade people that they need Jesus. We certainly believe God for great things. Thank you, faithful supporters of our ministry, of our church, all of you members that are holding on during this difficult day. This is a crazy mixed up time, isn't it? It looks like the pot is being stirred and every evil work, every evil spirit is being brought to the top. Amen. And we're seeing racism like we've never witnessed yes. it before. We've seen hatred, we've seen pain and suffering, sickness and disease, oh, open yeah. murder on the streets by those who are committed and have pledged to defend the ones that they're murdering. And so it's a, a, a time for the church to be the church. I wanna say this and I don't wanna miss uh, represent anything. I believe in the world of politics. God calls people, trains people, and people have a heart and mind for it. And I'm glad for those that are committed to the world of politics. I'm glad for those that are committed to civil change, even if that sometimes requires civil disobedience. I am thankful that God will inspire some to rise up and say, we're not going to tolerate this anymore oh, yeah. and do it in such a way that the whole world sees the problem and understands that change must come. Yes. I'm glad that God has called others to go into the legal fields and uh, some of us into the medical fields and some of us into the areas of science and technology and all of the things that we do. But of all the things that we do, don't let your vocation steal your testimony. Oh, yes. Your vocation is not who you are, that's what you do. That's right. Hallelujah, I am a doctor. Amen. But I am a member of the body of Christ. Yes. I am a child of God. I am born again, washed in his blood, and I have a mission. Yes. You say, oh, yeah, your mission is to heal the sick bodies and to help uh, people who are in pain and, and help them get health care. Yes, that is a part of my assigned mission as my vocation, but I have a spiritual mission, and that's to tell men and women, boys and girls in this dying world that we are not here to stay. We are passing through, and some are going to pass through faster than others, but God has called us to be his voice and a voice crying in the wilderness. And I'm going to tell you, there's a wilderness out there. When we talk about the goodness of Jesus and we openly proclaim his name, we're in a wilderness all by ourselves. But thank God for the righteous. Thank God for the family of God. Thank God for the believers. Thank God for those that are praying and lifting all Christians and all those who call on his name uh, to a higher level. Yes. So I appreciate each of you. And I believe you've been praying because I sense the power of his anointing and the power of his prayer, amen, of our prayers, and those prayers are being effective. I'm going to ask you to do something before I go into the word tonight, amen, and this is nothing unusual. It is Bible study to some extent, and so here's what you're going to need, uh, three things you're going to need. You're going to need a, a pa piece of paper or a pad. I prefer a pad or a tablet, something you won't easily discard, something when you look for it, you'll know exactly where it is. If you need a moment to reach and get it, Get yourself a pen, some paper, a pad, or a book that you can write in, and uh, bring your faith. Ha <laughs> ha. I said three things. Bring your pad, your pen, and your faith. What did I say bring? The your pad, pad your pen, pen, and, and your, your faith. faith. There's some things that God has given me for you that will enable you to accomplish great exploits. Yes. And I need you to write these things down because your, your own writing, your own, the things you're going to write tonight, these will be your own best testimony of what prayer can do. How many believe in the power of prayer? Amen. Hallelujah. I know you're going to get your stuff. Get your stuff. But 
Uh, when you come back, put a glory in the atmosphere, the cyber atmosphere. Uh, why? Because we believe in the power of prayer. Prayer changes things. It really does, Brother Eddie, Pastor Superintendent Eddie Williams. Prayer yeah. changes things. And that's not just a saying. I think we take too much for granted. So we, it's good to be in church, but you can be in there so long that you get numb. You get kind of complacent. You become just another person who spits another church phrase word. Yes. But prayer changes things. It's not just a phrase word. It is a reality. Yes. That if you pray, God is able to change things and turn your life around. Thank yes. you, Evangelist Johnson. Amen for coming through. God is able. Yes. And there are some tools that every believer needs, and you won't necessarily get these on a Sunday morning because we got a different agenda for Sunday morning. We got a different agenda, even on cyber, on video, on the virtual world. There, some people only look for the word on Sunday. They say, "Well, it's Sunday. Let me see if I can find some church." You can find church seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Now, yeah. praise the Lord! I'm excited about that. But at the same time, uh, there's some people that will only look for it on a uh, Sunday, but for you, the believers who are here tonight, you must have a real desire to learn something. And I know what you say, well, how can you teach me anything? I've been in church 40 years. Well, praise God for the 40, but we've been reading, for the Lord is my shepherd for 40 years. And we keep getting new inspiration, don't we? Amen. We keep getting new excitement out of the word of God. And I believe God is going to bless us. You got your stuff? You, let me hear you. Let me see you. Respond to me. All uh, right. Tell me if you got it. You got your pen? You got your paper? You got your pen? You got your paper? You're going to need your stuff tonight. You're going to need your stuff because I don't want to just do this. Uh, God bless you all the bunch. I don't want to just do this at a one time. Then y'all say, what did he say? What day was that pastor taught that lesson? When was it? I got to find that because I need it now. I'm getting you. I'm giving you a tool. And I'm putting it in your hand yes. how to get what you want from God, especially during this time of crisis. That's what I'm trying to do for you. I'm really trying to help you. I'm not just on tonight to say, oh, look at me and my pretty purple. I know it looks good. That's okay. But I really want you to know that Pastor has something that I want to leave with you. I want to leave this with you. Thank you. I see you have it. Thank you, Sister Davina. Uh, Sister Smith, you got it? All right, so bless so yeah, you're ready. All right, listen, saints, our text tonight is coming from the book of St. Mark, chapter 11, verses 20 through, 22 through 26. Uh, go to St. Mark 11, 22 through 26. San Marco, 11, 22 a 26. I believe God is going to bless. When we go to Puerto Rico, and I'm not going to do it tonight, but we have to preach sometimes and translate as we go. Uh, and and we, the way we do it is, I would say, uh, uh, God bless you, saints. Yo bendiga a los santos. We come in the name of the Lord. Venimos en el nombre del Señor. We come to lift up the name Jesus. Venimos llevar más alto el nombre de Jesús. And so we go on and on. But uh, tonight we're going to preach in English. We're going, and those that are listening have time to stop it, go back, pick it up, and try uh, to go a little further. Thank you, Sister Angie. She'll be doing a little bit of translating on the texting site. Amen. And those of you, if you know the word of Spanish, you want to text some, translate, that'll be fine. St. Mark chapter 11, verse 22 through 26, just four verses. You can handle four verses tonight. Yes. And Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. <clears throat> but verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Final verse, but if you do not forgive, 
neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your test trespasses. Great text, great verse, great clarity. You don't need a great anointing to interpret what is being said. It's plain, it's clear, and the point of the message Jesus is telling his disciples after they have witnessed 24 hours turnaround from a pro proclamation that he made on a fig tree. Yes. He said, nobody's going to eat on you from here on because the fig tree had no figs when Jesus needed figs. And often I've told you, church, whenever you think about your place in God and what you need to be doing, you just have to be ready when God is ready. You got to be prepared when the Lord is prepared. You don't have time to say, let me get ready. Be ye also ready. And so when Jesus and the disciples came past the fig tree and they saw the from afar off and they had leaves, they went with expectation of figs and they got there and there were no figs and Jesus cursed the tree. He went on into the temple and found them exchanging in the temple, money changing and buying and selling. And you know the story when he whipped them and drove them out wouldn't even let them pass through carrying any of their wares. Why? Because he said, this is my father's house and it is the house of prayer. Mm -hmm. And on the way back, as they went past that same spot, they all were shocked and amazed that the tree that he cursed had dried up from the roots. It was dry. It was brittle. It had died overnight. Yes. And uh, he said, I don't know why you're surprised. If you have faith in God, you could speak to the mountain, tell the mountain move and be cast into the sea. You just got to have faith in God. Now, was Jesus saying they could move that mountain physically? I don't think there was a purpose of a value of giving them mountain moving power uh, when the mountain is doing perfectly fine right there where it is. But he really wasn't talking about that physical mountain. He was saying to them, if whatever's going on in your life, whatever struggles going on in your life, whenever people come to curse you, whenever something comes and it doesn't bless you, because all of God's people are supposed to be blessed. If something comes and it is not there to bless you, curse it and get it out of the way. Wow, Pastor. If somebody's in your life and they're not blessing you, move them on out of the way. If something is hindering your ability to reach the zenith that God has for you, you need to reject it in the name of the Lord and accept the blessing of God. And in 24 hours, according to the testimony of his example, you can expect your deliverance. Amen. Tonight, I want to use for a subject, a prescription for mountain moving faith. Amen. A prescription for mountain moving faith. Why a prescription? Because I told you all I'm a doctor and that's what we do, we write prescriptions. Why? Because pastors all are physicians of some sort. We can give you the medicine, but it's up to you to take it. We can give you the prescription, but like so many of y'all, uh, you went to the doctor, got the prescription, never even got it filled. Got it filled and didn't even take the first pill. You took the first pill and it didn't do anything. You threw the rest of the 90 away. That stuff ain't no good. But you got to follow the plan that the Lord has set forth for you. Amen. Here in this text, we understand that Jesus was telling his disciples the first thing you have to do when you want to tap into the miracle power of God, and everybody wants it. We want God to move the virus. We want God to change our finances. We want God to bless us with a new home and a new car. We want God to move things out of the way that are hindrance to us. We want God to step in and get a miracle. But he said the first thing you got to do uh, when you pray, you got to believe. Yes. You got to believe. Yes. Have faith in the God that you're praying to that things will come to pass. However, if you fast forward to verse 25, somebody say 25. 25. And when you stand praying, the first thing you do when you start praying is forgive. I'm sorry, Pastor Johnson. I'm sorry, uh, Pastor Superintendent Williams. I I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Sister Petrina Williams. I I'm sorry. And to my dear friends, I, I'm sorry, uh, Sister Glennette Lofton, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Brother Mollison, forgive me, uh, First Lady Amos, forgive me. Pastor Amos, why are you saying to these people, forgive you? I can't think of nothing I did to him, but I know what I want from God. Amen. 
I want a blessing from God and I cannot let my attitude, my personality, my sometimes dismissive attitude, my loftiness, I cannot allow that to hinder me from getting what God has for me. God can have a blessing on the other side of the Jordan, but you may not have faith to stretch out your rod to divide the Jordan so you can go get what God has for you. And so first thing you got to do is forgive. And I, I encourage you to jump down to 26 before you give God your litany, your long list of things you want from him. Jump into the forgiveness first. Get your heart right. Get your attitude right. Get your personality right. Yeah, you've been wronged. You've been mistreated. Yeah, somebody called you out of your name. Yeah, there's some white folk don't like you. Yeah, there's some black folk don't like you. Yeah, somebody might have used a slanderous tone in their voice and it stuck you like a knife in your heart and you've been in pain ever since. The Lord says, I want you to forgive. My Lord, my Lord. Lord, how can we forgive? You know what they did to my people. You know what they did to my ancestors. How can I forgive? Well, you don't have to if you don't want nothing. Mm -mm. If you don't want the blessings of God, you don't want the power to speak to your circumstance and say, in the name of Jesus, be thou removed and cast out of my life. And if you don't want that, if you don't want the power to change your world and have faith in the thing that you speak, then keep on having an ought. I like that word, an ought. An ought. The Bible says you got an ought. That's just a little something. An ought isn't a big issue. It's not a big condemning item. It could be one small thing that you refuse to let go of. And you got to let it go to have mountain moving power. Tell somebody, yeah. let it go. Just let, let it, it go. go. Let, let it, it go. go. I know you let didn't get to go. speak to people when we came in. We didn't give you that space to greet your neighbors. I wanted to jump right into this word. But tell somebody on there that you saw on there, let it go, child. Let it go. Let it go. Don't tell them what to let go because I don't want you to put their business out on cyber world. But just let it go. Forgive those that have hurt you. Forgive those that have pained you. Those that have Forgive that mother that didn't raise you, but she gave you the grandma. Forgive that father that walked away and should have been there when you needed them. Forgive that brother who mistreated you when the will was read or, or was in charge of the stuff and the stuff disappeared and you holding on to that. Forgive it. The car is rusty and gone. The clothes have rotted. The diamonds are no more good. Why? Because they didn't lost them upon them. Get rid of that out of your heart. Yes. You come too far to let a ring hold you back. You come too far to let a pearl necklace hold you back. You come too far to let a piece of property over on the other side of town hold you back yes. from being able to write your own check with God. Oh, he said to us in the book of St. Matthew, if you have faith, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Yes. Now, I know you didn't have to write that down. That's not what I told you to write down. That's already in your Bible. You can go back to St. Mark chapter 11 and uh, verse 22 uh, through 26 at any time. You can go there and read and be refreshed and you can uh, be renewed. But here is what I want you to do. And I, I want to share with you how this came to me. I have been in prayer asking the Lord to give me a greater anointing because I have to do a greater kind of preaching. I got to do a greater kind of reaching. I got to be able to reach the hearts and the souls and the minds of the people that I haven't been able to see. I can't get to you to lay hands on you. I can't physically, verbally, or uh, rather in your presence come and speak healing in your life and say it's going to be all right. I can't visit your hospitals and be there with you at this time in, in our period of suffering in this pandemic. So Lord, I, I need a kind of anointing that will transcend the camera and transcend the internet and reach into the hither and yonder of the world and bring healing and safety and peace and deliverance into the heart. I need somebody to perceive the anointing of God in me when I speak even from North Carolina to wherever you are. Yeah. And I said, Lord, I need this. And about that time, I received a message from someone that said, I, I just don't even know how to pray in this season. There's so many things and issues in my life. I, I, Pastor Bishop, I don't even know how to pray through this. And let me tell you, believers, you can run into something you don't know how to pray through. 
You can run into something where you need somebody on your side. You need to be able to call somebody and say, look, I, I know you're going to say just pray about it, but I, I, I don't even know the words of prayer. The saints used to testify in the old days when we let you testify. We can't do it much because we don't know what you're going to say nowadays. And get the mic and start talking about all kind of stuff. Oh, but they used to testify uh, at the end of the testimony. They would say, and I want you to pray for me that I'll be the one the Lord is calling for in these last and evil days. Not that they'd be the only one. They just said, I really want to be in the number. Mm -hmm. Pray for me that I can be in the number in these last and evil days. And sometimes you need somebody to pray for you, but it's hard to find somebody that's already been fasted and already been praying and already on that level of anointing that can jump right in and give you what thus saith the Lord. So this woman was telling me it was so hard. She uh, texted, emailed me, and I felt the pain in the message saying, Bishop, I don't even know how to pray through this. And I asked the Lord to give me something to share with her. And this is what the Lord spoke to me. Number one, here's what I want each of you to do. It's, it's study time. Number one, write your seven most important issues on a pad or a piece of paper, put it in a book, somewhere that you can go back to it. Your seven, list them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you're afraid somebody's gonna find it, write it in code. You don't wanna put the business out in case the wrong person picks up the book. It's about your child who's locked up in drugs and got getting ready to go to the judge. Write, my, my child, you don't have to put the detail. You and God know what it is. But if you're afraid you're gonna forget it, it's probably not your most important. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> Write down the seven most important issues going on in your life. You see, part of the problem that we have, uh, if you have started making your wish list, you would have many, many things. And the word of God in the text that we read does say, when you pray, believe uh, that you receive them and you shall have them. And I've taught you before, our God is not restricted to one blessing or one blessing at a time. There's no limit to what he's able to do. But the problem isn't his ability, it's our ability to stay focused long enough. Because you give God one thing and before the next day you say, Lord, I know I prayed about that, but I need this. And then the next day, Lord, I know I told you about the, that and the this, but I need uh, the, the next blessing. And Lord, I, I got an issue. Oh, look like you just a bundle of issues. But what if you could pick the seven items? Say, Lord, if you did this for me, hey, hallelujah, I feel the glory of God in here right now. And you ought to feel it right there because yeah. we're in the same spiritual room. Yeah. 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 Write it down. Lord, if you do this for me, this is number one. This is number one. And, and don't, 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 don't limit God. Don't, don't limit, don't limit God. Which one is easy for him to tell the, the man that was lame and laid let down through the roof. Your sins be forgiven or take up your bed and walk. Which one's easier? They're just as easy. There's no secret what God can do. You just have faith in God, Jesus said. You have that faith, you can move some mountains. And I want you to write your mountains down, number one. Then number two, number three, number four. Put it on the paper, write it down. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then I want you to put today's date beside each item. We're gonna date it. How long does it take God to do what he's gonna do? He can change things in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. God can cause a change in your life. God can cause a change in your life. What the time is the thing is 7.37. The day is 7.15, yes, the date. Put the time down if you want to. I want to show you it doesn't take God long when you pray effectively. It doesn't take him long to do what he's got to do. Well, Pastor Amos, I, I got my seven things written down, Bishop. Uh, I got them written down. I'm excited now. What, what do I do next? Number two. Put the, today's date on it. You've done the date. And then number three is going to be the hardest thing that you've ever had to do. 
pray twice a day. Since we're dealing with sevens, I will ask you to pray twice a day at 7 and a.m. and 7 p.m. But if that time period doesn't work for you, just choose a time. But make it 12 hours apart. What am I going to pray? Number four. You're praying over number one. You're going to pray on the first day for number one. Nothing else. Nothing else. Commit to pray on number one for seven days. Wow. Wait a minute. So, but what about not? My number five is important to me too. I understand number five is important to you, but have faith in God. Why would you spread it? Why can't I just pray? Let's make my petition, lay my whole petition before God. Here's the problem with laying petitions before God. Here's the problem with giving God a long list. If your list is actually that long, what took you so long to pray about it? Mm. No, no, no. If you got all that going on, how did you, a believer, a saint of God, allow the enemy to pack all this stuff on you? And you have always had the promise of St. Mark eleven twenty four. You've always had the promise of, lo, I'll be with you always. You've always had the promise that he will always hear you. So if you get nervous because I said pray for one thing for seven days twice a day, it's because you don't have faith in God. Mm. But, 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 but no, Bishop, no, you got it wrong. I have faith in God, but I have many needs. He knows what you need even before you ask. Yes, he does. Why are you struggling over praying on number one twice a day for seven days when he knows every hair that's on your head. He knows every small bird that falls to the ground and dies. He knows the lilies of the field need addressing and he dresses them up. He knows you need food. He knows you need water. He knows you need clothing. He knows you need your health. But you chose number one. And I said choose number one, but I got many. Choose one. Choose one. Say with me, choose one. choose one. I know it's getting hard. I know it's getting tough. I know this is difficult. Choose one and leave the rest alone for seven, for the rest of the seven days. Lord, I ain't even going to bother you with number two, three, four, five, six, or seven for seven days. I'm not even going to bother you with it. I'm just going to focus because I said, this one thing will I seek after. Thank you, David. This one thing will I contend for. This one petition will I have before God, and that will I seek after. I'm going to believe God for the one thing. He knows I need many, but I'm going to trust God for one. Say with me, trust God for one thing. Trust God for one thing. Listen, it's going to be so hard when you pray. It's going to be a short prayer. It don't have to be a long prayer, just a sincere prayer. And have faith in the thing that you're praying for, that God will bring it to pass. Yes. Pray for it and move on. Pray for it and leave it alone. Yes. Pray for it and walk away from your paper. Yes. Pray for it, trust God, and say it is well. Yes. Oh, I'm preaching so good right yes, now. You are. One thing. One thing. But, 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 but I see you don't understand. My, my child is sick and my, my bills I do, one thing, pick one. Which one do you need to ask God to do that he wouldn't do without you asking? Wow. Which one must you tell God about that he won't do anything unless you pray? Oh, I'm still on number one, dealing with the first day prayer the first week prayer, seven days, twice a day, on number one. How many got that? Amen. Don't mention it for seven days. And then at the end of praying for that one issue, write your end date. 
So you're writing the day you start, and you're going to write the day you finish. Write the end date. There's another date that you need to have room on that paper, on that line. My prayer start date, my prayer finish date, and then you know what the third one is? I know you already know. The he did it date. Hey, glory to God. Now, I know you're going to praise God between asking and he did it anyway. You're not going to wait until it's over to praise him. You're going to put some praise in, and that's why you're going to pray a short prayer and put your petition before him. And the rest of your day, the rest of your time, you're spent blessing the name of the Lord. For I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. So you're going to spend your time. You've told God what you need. You believe God for it. And now you're praising him for it. You're going to repeat it at seven, uh, the second seven or the second uh, prayer in your day. And you're going to believe God for it. You're going to do it on day number two. You're going to do it on day number three. You're going to do it on day number four, number five, number six, and number seven. And then you're going to put a date down. I've done it for seven days. And I'm simply going to trust God that I don't have to bring this up anymore. <laughs> Ooh, glory to the name of the Lord. I'm putting an end date on it. Devil, I'm writing your D-Day, your end day, the day that I lay this issue down and I'm not going to pick it up anymore. The day that I have declared, I have prayed over it, I prayed about it. I believe God for it. My faith has increased. I've been praising him even though I didn't see it. I've been praising him even though I didn't feel it. I've been praising him even though I didn't know when he was going to do it. But you know what I found out over the course of this prayer week? I found out God is able. Yes, he is. My faith has increased to believe that he's going to do what he said he's going to do. Who bless the name of the Lord. Lord, I ain't even going to bother you on day number eight. I'm not even going to bother you about this thing I prayed about in the first week, because that's your business now. It's yours now. I have delivered it. I have brought it, and I have delivered it unto you, and I know you're able. I know you're able. I know you're able to bring it to pass, and I'm trusting you that you're going to do it. So you did that for the first week. Here's what's going to happen. So many of you are thinking, well, that'll be seven weeks and how many days and how many prayers. I promise you, it won't even get that far. Mm. That's what the Lord told me to tell you. If you just try him, because it's not that he can't, but he's waiting on you to get your attitude right. Yes. Waiting on you to get your spirit right. So that by the time you have prayed twice a day for three days, four days, five days, in your second week, perhaps, you will find such strength and confidence and faith in God that you'll start proclaiming some things that's not even on your list. Yes. I have faith that God is going to bless. I have faith somebody call you, oh, honey, it's going to be all right. How do you know it's going to be all right? I just trust God. God yes. bless you, First Lady Hennings. I just trust God that God is going to bring it to pass. Yes. Pray twice a day and don't mention nothing else on your list. Don't mention none of this. Other. Just trust God for your seven. In fact, don't even bother other stuff. Let God deal with it. Yes. Things you didn't even write down, the stuff that you didn't have the courage to write down. It must not have been that important to you. Hmm. But you're going to go through your faith walk with this prescription for mountain moving faith. If you get into your second week, and you're going to repeat that process, praying twice a day, believing God for victory in your life, believing that God is going to turn it around, believing that God is going to make a way, that he's going to open doors. So I feel the glory of God. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. When you get to that point, mm -hmm. you will find out the value and the pressure and the importance of some of those things are not as important as you thought they were. Because when he knocks off your number one, <laughs> glory and deals with your number two you look down at number seven you say i don't even know why i put that on my list i don't even know why i let that bother me you know why you suddenly have that attitude change because you look at how grave and how serious and how big number one was and when he finished it for you when he fixed it for you you realize if he can fix my number one my number seven is nothing mm. 
And I'm not even going to, you won't make it to number seven without that prayer being answered before you get to that seventh week. I promise you this is from God. If you trust God and let this exercise build your faith and build your strength and lift you up and cause you to learn how to praise him in advance. Praise him between the morning and the evening prayer. On the first day, the second day, praise him between the morning and the evening. Your prayer going to get shorter and your praise is going to get longer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Yes, Ooh, Sister Amos, I'm excited okay. about this word. Yeah. Said your prayer is going to get shorter. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Tears you. in my eyes thinking about it. Yeah. And your praise is going to get longer. Because you ought to spend more time praising than you do praying. Mm -hmm. I know prayer is effective. Prayer changes things. Men ought to always pray and not to faint. Cease. Don't cease to pray. Uh, petition God. That's when it's a number one. But after a while, you'll be down on number four, and then you'll be like, well, Lord, anyway, you bless me. <laughs> I'll be satisfied. Lord, my confidence in you is so high because I remember when I was at a number one level, my most critical problem in my life, and I watched you do it, and I watched you fix it, and I learned to trust in you through the process and hold on during the way and during the time when men said it could not happen, and I saw you fix it. And you know what? I, I feel shame that I even wrote down number five. Mm. I feel so ashamed that I wrote down number six. Why would I even have thought that that would be a problem? It is really, truly no secret. You are unlimited. You are all powerful. You are omnipotent because the biggest problem I had in my life, you fixed it. Somebody put a praise right there. Put a, oh my God, put a praise right there. Put a praise right there. That's why I told you to choose your greatest issue your greatest problem. Make that number one. That's the one you're going to exercise your St. Mark 11 and 24 about. But you're going to deal with your 25. You're going to pray and say, Lord, forgive me. Help me to forgive those who've yeah. trespassed against me. Help me to forgive those who've caused me to miss out on the greatness of your power. By holding that thing in my heart, I release it. I release it. I release it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Someone said to me the other day, it just seems that uh, African Americans are so quick to forgive. And maybe that's a, a shortcoming they were saying, that we forgive so easy. We forgive stuff that other folk would have held on to. We forgive things that other people would never have are forgiven and we move on and uh, I mentioned uh, to them that possibly this heritage of forgiving is because it was a survival method back in the days when you had no recourse and no support and nobody on your side and nobody to protest we've been killed and lynched all the time yeah. and then when your tragedy would happen the one that did it was too powerful to even bring charges on mm. All you had to do, all you could do was let it go. Let it go. Why? Because if you tried to bring reprisal, they'd come back and kill your children, come back and separate your family, burn down your house, or, or bring trouble into the neighborhood. So you took that weight on your shoulder, said, I'm, I'm going to forgive them because I don't want them to do worse to my neighbors. Yes. I'm going to forgive them because I don't want them to hurt, come back and hurt my family. Oh, the enemy is evil when he needs to be evil, isn't he? The enemy yes. knows how yes. to lay yes. evil on. Yes. And so African Americans, we've learned to be forgiving. It's a part of our nature, our training, part of our character. We've learned to turn the cheek. We've learned to uh, take down the right for the wrong and just uh, let it go. And it wasn't because we were afraid. It wasn't because of fear. It was simply because we didn't want somebody else to have to suffer yes. behind our response to the mistreatment. Yes. Yeah, I understand. There are times we need to forgive. But Jesus said, if you want what God has for you, and I'm talking about a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. Now God's gonna take care of the evildoer. Yes. He said, if you mistreat even one of the least of my children, mm -hmm. you might as well put a, a millstone around your neck and be cast into the sea. I have an answer for you. I've got a solution for you that are mistreating my people. Mm -hmm. But what is 
the one that says, I belong to God to do. St. Mark eleven twenty five 25 says, first thing you do is when you stand, pray. Yes. Forgive. Okay. When you get up for that 7 a.m. or that 7 p.m. or that whatever your 12-hour prayer is going to be. First thing you do is forgive. forgive. And if you don't know what to forgive, trust me, the Holy Ghost will bring it to your remembrance. Oh, yes. Holy Ghost is going to bring it to your remembrance what you need to forgive. Holy Ghost is bring, going to bring it to your remembrance what you need to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, take it out of my heart. Lord, take this off of my shoulder. Lord, help me oh, to yes. overcome. Oh, yes. Because I know you're going to take care of them, but I'm, I want you to take care of me. It's me. It's me. It's me, Lord, in the need of prayer. Yes. Because what I need is greater than somebody talking about me. What I need is greater than somebody mistreating me. What I need is greater than somebody trying to embarrass me. I'll move on from that in order to get what I want from God. Yes. Hallelujah. And you ain't even got to put a curse on them. Don't do a silly. <laughs> don't even try it. Don't even, don't even try it. Don't try to ask the Holy Ghost to bring vengeance. God already said vengeance is mine. But you got to do your part. Amen. Because there's so much you want. You're number one. You're number two. Number three, four, five, six, and seven. Now, I want you to look at your paper. Everybody, this was your exercise. Look at your paper. And I'm going to give you one chance to revise your list. Ah. One opportunity to revise your list. Take a look at your list. It's your choice. What is your number one issue that you want God to fix? And you're going to pray about that twice a day and praise him in between. And you're going to do that for seven days. Twice a day for seven days. You say it's number one, so it's worth praying about twice a day for seven days, isn't it? You said it was your number one, the biggest problem you got in your life, your biggest issue. Lord, if you do this, the majority of my days will be in peace here from here going forward. You're number one. The Lord gave me this for you, church, and for all of those that will receive it. Yeah, why can't God just do it? Because you have a responsibility. Your faith needs to be increased in the days of COVID-19. Your faith needs to be increased when it's time now to consider whether or not to send your children back to school. Your faith needs to be increased when it's time to go back to work and, and you're wearing a mask and your coworkers not. Your faith needs to be increased now when you, you want to stop by the restaurant, but you got fear in your heart and you're looking through the window of McDonald's and your favorite drive throughs and checking, did, did they, we used to see, did they wash their hands? I saw it scratch her head. Uh, uh, that apron's too nasty. But now we wonder, did they cover their mouth? Oh, yes. We can let fear overtake us, but God can take fear out of the heart. God can take fear out of the mind and out of the spirit. Amen, somebody. He give you a chance. I was talking while you had a chance to rearrange your list if you need to. What is your number one issue? And you're not going to wait forever. I'm just asking you to pray for seven days. That's what the Lord told me to tell this sister uh, who requested to know how to pray. And that's what I'm telling you. Make sure if you're going to spend time praying, it's the most important thing in your life. Now, he's concerned about all of the stuff in your life. But you make a priority. You make it your number one. How many are going to try it? You're going to try it? I'm looking for your response. You're going to believe God for it? I'm looking for your response. You're going to let God fix it? Yes. Let God turn it around? You're going to let God be the one? to bring peace into your heart and peace into your life. I believe that by this time next week, we're going to have some testimonies. Uh, late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. <laughs> Hallelujah. Put a praise right there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. While you're trying to pray it out, he's already worked it out. Work it out. <laughs> Before you can even answer before you can even pray rather he can answer before you call that's the kind of god we serve and so now you have a prescription for mountain moving faith it takes a little energy it takes faith it takes commitment if it's that important to you set your alarm clock 
If you really want it, make your prayer time an important piece where you can't be disturbed. Make sure your phone is on silent and, and your children are not bothering you. They're going to be asleep anyway. Make sure that nothing will interrupt that moment. I'm not, and I didn't even tell you how long to pray. It's not even that important how long you pray. It's the sincerity of the prayer that you whisper. Lord Jesus, this is my number one problem. And I believe that you are able to turn it around. And I petition you, I ask you, Lord, fix it. Somebody just shout, fix it, fix it. Don't be ashamed to say it, fix it. And if you don't fix it, fix me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. If you don't fix it, fix me. And I believe through what God has shared with me in the spirit concerning this exercise, some of you won't make seven days. It won't take seven days. You're going to have a date, a he did it date, mission accomplished date. And you'll be able to move on to number two. I know the Lord has blessed you, and this is the word of the Lord concerning. Let me pray, Lord, we thank you for this word that you've given me for your people, a word to lift them up and encourage their faith, that each day they pray, that each week that goes by, their faith will be so increased yes, that Lord. they will have no doubt, and they will be with the disciples in that number, standing with Jesus yes. in the presence of that dried up fig tree, when Jesus says, if you have faith in God, you can speak to that mountain and say, mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. And it shall take place. Thank you, Jesus. Let them be blessed. If there's somebody who's not saved and does not know you in the pardon of their sins, they want mountain moving power. They want the power to speak to you as a child to their father. They want the power to trust in your word that when you say it, pray and that you will answer, they can pray and walk away knowing it's in your hands and that you will do and bring to pass the thing that has been petitioned. Lord, we believe you now. I pray for them, their faith be increased. If they don't know you, give them the strength to say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you as my savior. I receive you as my keeper. Let deliverance touch me. Rebuke the work of the enemy in my life. Give me strength to overcome every obstacle in the name of Jesus. And I believe I have faith that it shall come to pass. Somebody put a praise right there in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, amen. God is able to do exceeding abundantly more than you can even ask or think. Thank you, saints. I believe God is going to do it. And I want you to start day one. Start tonight if you want to. You got your list. Pray over number one. Don't look at two, three, four, five, six, or seven. Stay with number one. That is the prescription. Watch God fix it. God bless you. I thank God for you. We believe God for great things. Please pay attention to the offering instructions on the side. I know this ministry has blessed you. It's blessed me. Because I got some things I'm praying about. When God speaks to the saints, he speaks through me, but he's also speaking to me. So I am as blessed as you are through this word. Because I believe God that he will answer my prayer. I want you to trust God in your giving today, this, this evening. It's a weekday service. And for everyone that listens, for everyone that passes through in the days and weeks to come, when this message blesses you, just give a minimal offering. Give something. Don't let it pass without giving an offering. It's no shame to give $1, $2, $5. We have thousands of people who watch these sermons. And if you would simply give $1 when it blesses you, our ministry will be blessed. Our needs will be met. But to the members of the church, 
We'll receive your tithe. We'll receive your offerings through the Givelify or the Cash app or through the P.O. Box. You can write a check if you want to write a check. But just believe God. Even as I as pastor and the pastors around this country that call me and we talk about the crisis that's in our land, we believe God for a day of deliverance. We believe God for a day when we'll be able to come back together and lift up the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. How many believe God with us? Amen. Hallelujah. So offer your offerings at this time, old landmark. Give us a little offering music, Sister Amos. And I want to remind you that uh, Sunday night is going to be an awesome night in the Lord. Amen. I ex expect you, old landmark, to be present. I expect you to, if you have questions, have confidence to ask them. I expect you to see what God is doing and what God is saying uh, during this time period so that he can reach his people and so the people of God can be blessed. The blood